Hi, I'm Kamal Chilaka. Welcome back to my channel. I've been a practicing photographer for over 20 years now. And for the last six years, I've been exhibiting and selling my work through art galleries and art fairs in India and internationally. So today I'm going to share with you five important skills that you need to master to become a fine art photographer. So before we get on with that, what is fine art photography? If you get on the net, you will find a numerous definitions of and very loose definitions of what is fine art photography. But let me just read out to you the Wikipedia version. Fine art photography is photography created in line with the vision of the photographer as artist using photography as a medium for creative expression. The goal of fine art photography is to express an idea a message or an emotion. This stands in contrast to representational photography which, such as photojournalism or commercial photography. That's a lot of jargon and uh, I'm pretty sure you're still not clear what fine art photography is. I would like to define fine art photography in simpler terms. If you think of photography as a craft and you're so good, you become so good at your craft and you're creating work not for commercial use, but as just an expression of, of you as a person, as an individual. And your craft transcends into fine art. In terms of the business of fine art photography, I would define it in simpler terms as fine art photography is the art of creating photographic works which are exhibited and sometimes sold at curated venues such as galleries, museums and, and art fairs. So you want, if you want to become a fine art photographer, there are five areas in which you need to develop your craft and take it to the next level. The first skill you need to pick up is the technical side of photography, which is basically you're getting really familiar with your camera to start with. Read the user manual time and time again, so you know every aspect and even you should be able to operate it uh, blindfolded. Second is the exposure triangle. Learn to get properly exposed images. Uh, your ISO, your shutter speed, your aperture, all the things that go into making a technically perfect image. I'm not getting too much into that because I'm kind of assuming you already know all those things. You're looking to become a fine art photographer, so you're, you're already a photographer. But if you're still interested in learning more about the basics, do check out my other video where I talk about books for beginner and intermediate photographers. But today I'm going to talk to you about the second important skill which is to, but today I'm going to start with recommending books to, for developing the second important skill which is the softer side of photography which is developing your vision, the way you see, the way you spot photographic opportunities. What composition, how do you decide what to put in your frame and what to leave out of it. All these things encompass the softer side of photography. So you need to develop your vision and how do you develop your vision? The best way to develop your vision is by taking a lot of photographs, looking at the works of masters before you, looking at the works of other artists, not just photographers. Look at the works of masters like uh, Da Vinci, look at the works of Michelangelo, look at the works of other masters. Look how they used light in their art. Uh, at the end of the day, photography is the art of painting with light. So you need to get really good with the way you explore and showcase light and how you use light to create amazing visual experiences. Look at the works of photographers like Sebastio Salgado. Look at the work of Bill Brandt. So the next best thing to going to a gallery and especially in these COVID times, the best thing to do would be to pick up photography, coffee table books, pick up photography books showcasing the works of the masters. Here are a couple which, which really inspired me. Uh, one is this entire series called the Hasselblad Masters. Yes, I think even though most of these photographs are shot medium format cameras, you can still apply, can still inspire you to make photographic art with whatever camera you have. Could be a, could be an APS-C camera, could be a DSLR, could be a medium format camera, could be a film camera. Okay, this is one of the better coffee table books that you find showcasing various artists and it also gives you an insight into different types of work. So it's not just portrait photography, this portrait photography, there is all manners of art, fine art photography is covered in this series. So do check them out. This is one of the more inspiring series of books out there with very high quality work. Another book I highly recommend is uh, books by Sebastio Salgado. He is definitely one of my biggest inspirations along with Steve McCurry, uh, who was uh, with National Geographic earlier. I have a couple of his books as well. But do check out this book, uh, and especially this collection called Genesis. 
It's one of the best collections of black and white images. Shot in the modern era, but but printed in black and white. I was lucky enough to see an exhibit of uh, this collection, Genesis, at the Photographiska uh, Photography Museum in uh, Stockholm. In case you're not able to go and check out one of his exhibits, I highly recommend uh, the next best thing, which is picking up this book. It's a big, as you can see, it's a big, a uh, thick book it's got hundreds of images and uh, covering uh, his photographic works right from antarctica to the falklands to africa just amazing breathtaking images highly recommend this as well so there are a lot of other books you can pick up coffee table books by various photographers and that would be a great way to uh, be inspired and also give some kind of direction because once you see different types of work you'll understand what type of work that you want to be working on and it's a starting point to developing your own uh, individual style so once you've developed the technical side of photography and also now that you learn to see the next skill that you need to master is the digital darkroom because if you understood the technical side of digital cameras by now you will also understand why it's important for you to be able to work in the digital dark room because all digital images need some kind of post processing some may need less some may need more especially depending on what your vision is because what you capture in camera may be only the starting point of what your end vision is so one of the best books that i would recommend is the digital negative by jeff shu in this the author uh, talks about three specific tools which are uh, adobe camera raw photoshop lightroom and also when to use uh, photoshop itself but more importantly he talks about how to handle the digital negative and preserve it in the best form possible right through your editing process all the way up to when you have to print your image the tools that he uses are adobe camera raw lightroom and photoshop but more than the tools themselves it's about process and the workflow that uh, are highly impressive in this book so definitely must have in your photography library and two must have books again are the photoshop lightroom book by scott kelby because this is an older edition, I suggest you get the latest edition. Uh, I think uh, the latest edition was released in 2017 or 2018. And also the Adobe Photoshop CC book. Because uh, Lightroom and photo Photoshop are really the two best tools that you have to be able to one manage your digital assets, which are your neg digital negatives, and also to along with Camera Raw, which is built into um, it's a free download if you um, subscribe to photoshop or lightroom for you to manage your digital assets as well as process them and they work very well together because you can easily uh, very easily transfer files from lightroom to photoshop and back uh, as required uh, one of the best uh, authors of books on photoshop and lightroom is scott kelby and i highly recommend his books because these are the books i refer to and these are the books i read to actually develop my base in photoshop lightroom and cc of course now that i've been using them for a few years now all i do is really keep myself updated about the latest updates to Lightroom and Photoshop. To build a strong foundation, I strongly recommend getting the books. Get really good at the basics, then uh, go online to keep updated about the latest tools uh, and changes in the software. Okay, so now you know how to shoot your images, how to compose your images, and also how to process your image. What comes next? The fourth important uh, skill that you need to develop is the art of printing. It's a massive art in itself, if you ask me. It takes years and years to uh, practice and become an expert at it but you can get pretty good at print a few months time. And to shorten your uh, learning curve, I strongly recommending getting good uh, books. The best books I have seen on fine art printing are the books uh, published by Rocky Nook. I have both second and third edition by Liu Steinmuller and Jorgen Galbins. This is the book, The Fine Art Printing of Photographers. Very comprehensive. Uh, again, like uh, Jeff Shoes, it's like almost like a continuation of the digital negative by uh, Jeff Shoe. Once you learn how to handle your digital negative and to process it in a careful manner, now they're ready, they're ready for printing. And then that's when the information in these books really starts off. So it's amazing, these books. It takes you uh, understanding your printer, understanding different mediums and uh, color profiles, all the things that you need to understand to be able to seamlessly transfer your digital, your artwork, which is in the digital realm still to the physical realm, which is the print. Since they're two different mediums, science works differently, but how to bridge that gap seamlessly uh, when you send a print command from your computer to your printer, that's what is captured in these books. And you need to know that well. Of course, you still need to do a lot of trial and error and get really good at uh, handling your own printer and your own set of medium, uh, your papers. And I, I would suggest really sticking to one or two different paper choices initially. And finally, and most importantly, 
I would say, especially if you want to make a career as a fine art photographer, you need to learn how to market, how to get opportunity to display your work, how to market your work and sell your work, right? So this book by Alan Briot, it's called Marketing for Fine Art Photographers, talks specifically about this particular subject. That book is a pretty comprehensive book, but it deals specifically with the, the US market, but you can apply that information also to your local market or any other market that you're looking to market your and sell your fine art uh, work through. Definitely this will help you to reduce the learning curve, make good decisions right from the beginning as to how you want to market your work, how to position market your work and sell your work online and uh, help you achieve your goals. You hope you found that information uh, interesting and useful. Wish you all the best with your career as a fine art photographer. Till next time, adios. Mm -hmm.